Let's start our journey as Minecraft mod developer. However, before starting to write a single line of code, we have a problem. Which one of the famous mod loaders should we choose? Forge, Neoforge, Fabric and others. There are many mod loaders out there and we don't know which one is the best. In this video, we will talk about mod loaders, what is a mod loader, which one we should choose and why we should choose one of them. If you ever played Minecraft for a long time, you would remember a day that we didn't have Forge, we didn't have any of these names. People had to open the minecraft.jar file, dropping a single file or few files there and closing it and running the game again begging for any god that it would work because we didn't have any concept of a mod loader basically back in old days minecraft itself was not friendly with modding community and we didn't have any sort of middleware that would read our code and inject it into the minecraft so uh, people had to decompile the Minecraft code and write their own code, compile it, obfuscate it. And here is the important part. They had to replace the original classes and files from Minecraft development team with their own. And well, sometimes they would do a nice job. Sometimes they would do a terrible job and things would crash. Also, there was another issue here. If you think about it, when I would write a mod for, I don't know, back in old days, obsidian armor was very famous. So if I had a mod for obsidian armor and someone would install my mod and he would want to install a second armor like ruby for example he wouldn't be able to do it because my mod and the ruby mod would both write the same class file that was the armor class and it would conflict with each other minecraft would definitely crash so how did they solve it? Few smart guys and girls sit around each other and talked about the concept of a mod loader. Now, what is a mod loader? Mod loader is an API that will sit between your code and Minecraft's original code. It will hook itself into the original code, read your code and inject it in proper places so that Minecraft would work as best as possible if now I write a code for an armor and you write a code for an armor Minecraft will not have a conflict because it's the job of the mod loader to read both of our mods and inject our codes one after another into the main class without causing any issues remember any mod loader is just an API so if you don't know what I mean by the words API I have a video for that go and watch it because if you don't understand this concept you will think that hey why this mod loader is not doing this or that and you will go to the discord channel asking their developers add this feature to your mod loader however the feature you're asking is not related to the mod loader it is related to the minecraft core itself and the job of mod loader is not to change the core behavior of Minecraft. So the very first mod loader that was out there and you don't find it anymore was called fancy mod loader. Later down the road it was evolved and it became Forge. You see it on the left hand side Google for Minecraft Forge download and the page will come up for sure. Now uh, LRAM separated from the original dev team and some guy called Lex Manus joined the team and later he became the leader of Forge development team. I personally have experienced the poison name Lex Manus and we will talk about it in a few minutes. It's not just me. I will show you the proof. However, let's talk about the Forge itself first and then we will talk about Neoforge and that is when we will talk about Lex in 
in detail. So Forge, uh, the problem with Forge is that when Forge was developed back in old days, we didn't have any way of directly manipulating and injecting our code into Minecraft as mod developers ourselves. So Forge had to hook itself into Minecraft classes in many, many, many places. And also the core functionality of how they load the mods was old fashioned. For example, one thing that I remember is that when Forge was originally developed, we didn't have Lambda in Java. So you can imagine how much it had to evolve during the time just to compensate for that. There are other issues with Forge at the same time. So first issue is that Forge has tons of events and hooks all around Minecraft classes. And each time Minecraft updates itself, it's a hell for Forge developers update Forge. Because first of all, the code is really old. Second of all, it has tons of hooks around the original code. And third of all, they have to deal with Lexmans. Let's talk about it later. The main issue I see with Forge is that the update rate is really slow. For example, right now Minecraft 1.20.4 is out there and Forge is still on 1.20.2. It didn't update itself to .4 yet. And I guarantee it will take at least another two or three weeks before the very first unstable version of Forge will come out for 20.4. A very slow process for a mod loader and it means that every mod that is written for Forge has to wait until Forge version is updated. Now after Forge a mod loader came out called Fabric. We will come back to fab Fabric as the last one but these days you hear a word called NeoForge. Now if you scroll down by the way it's NeoForge net if you scroll down there is a post by cpw and the text is what is happening those who know cpw is a very old member of modding community and a professional mod developer himself and last few years he was one of the core members of forge development team now i'm not gonna read it for you you can just go down and read it yourself however uh here's few lines that i will highlight for you i want to be clear lex has been a problem in the modding community for many many years almost every veteran minecraft modder has had a negative interaction with him over the past 12 years. I have been able to try to steer people to not abandon Forge just because of Lex defending him in many a private conversation with a frustrated mother who just be called a blah for thousandth time by Lex or banned for our online spaces for a trivial transgression like discussing fabric or a core mod. Yeah, uh, Lex would ban you immediately when you would call fabric mod loader. Finally, he decided to make a fork from Forge. So they did fork from Forge and they called it NeoForged and the NeoForge came out. However, take a look at the life cycle. Well, for 20.2, it was exactly the Forge itself. No changes there. A little bit here and there. And then for 1.20.3 and 4 is that now release 4.3, now updated 4.4 as well. So it looks like the life cycle is faster, isn't it? However, they are changing the capability system of NeoForge and God damn it, capability is a very bad situation there. I don't want to talk about it right now. However, if you come up to the top and you look at the versions available as a stable versions, where is that 0.3 and 0.4? Nowhere. It's not there. So although they are saying that it's ready, you don't see any download link at the top of the page. Again, slow update cycle. Now let's come back to the fabric. Fabric is a totally different 
percent mod loader written from scratch if you look fabric has different sections for itself it has fabric loader yarn uh, fabric loom language kotlin intermediary uh, tiny remapper and mapping io and you can go down sit and read everything about it however fabric for minecraft 1.20.3 and 20.4 and you may say that okay how do i know if it's ready or not if you come back to the blog and read that fabric for 20.3 and 20.4 it's on 13 november however i am sure that they did up to update it because if you go to their discord channel and look at the announcements it says fabric api for 20.4 is out already and fabric installer is out fabric loader is out supporting even the 20.5 snapshot so as you see as the snapshots are coming out fabric is updating itself very fast and ready to be used the moment minecraft gets out because fabric was updating itself based on the snapshots step by step and basically you are now ready to use it and you can sit back and read this blog post because they go deep into the uh, changes that are happening in 1.20.4 i will skip it for time being let me give you a brief thought process of myself as a mod developer because when you are becoming a mod developer you need to think about a long run support of your mod right now i am totally ignoring forge itself forge is a dead project in my eyes Neoforge, it can have a future based on the development team and how fast they develop. However, again, in my eyes, Neoforge is not a major project to work with. I don't think it's ready for production yet. My choice is Fabric. There is an argument out there related to comparing Fabric to Forge. They say that Fabric has less events compared to Forge. That is correct. However, in reality, in Fabric, you don't need that many events. When you know what is happening in Forge on the back, back end and background, you would know that uh, Forge had to have as many events as possible because they did want to hook themselves directly into the main Minecraft program and give open doors to us as mod developers so that we can hook our code into the Minecraft using those events. However, Fabric is newer in core programming and it's using something called mixins. Now you may say, hey, Forge has mixins. When people call for mixins in Forge, well, they hit a wall called Lex Manus. Forge has mixins, but it's not as flexible as usable compared to Fabric. You may ask, what is mixins? Well, mixins is a way to inject your code directly to the Minecraft class by yourself and not by mod loader. It means that as a mod developer, you can directly inject your code without worrying about other mod developers or the mod loader or anything else. This is a very powerful tool. However, it means something else at the same time. It's a very dangerous tool because you should be really careful how you are manipulating the base functionality of that class inside Minecraft because you don't know if anyone else is doing something else. That that is why if you go into the fabric discord you will see that they have two dev rooms and a very dedicated mixing room in mixing room it's really really busy very supportive and they are really good people in this community that will help you to write your mixings in a very correct way without causing any issues so whenever you are writing a mixing later down the road keep that in mind you may want to share your mixing with the community and ask hey if there is anything wrong with it or not now 
removing these events that Forge had utilizing mixin means that Fabric has smaller code by itself. Also, it means that a very faster life cycle for updates, more stable updates, giving you the ability to use mixin. It means that it's really powerful compared to limited access of events in Forge. You may laugh because I said limited access in Forge. Forge has tons of events, correct? But outside of those events, you really are limited. In Fabric, using mixin, the sky is the limit. Uh, one last thing that you need to keep in mind. If you want to play Minecraft yourself, or your kids are playing Minecraft, like my case, or you want to hit the bigger community out there for whatever reason, you should sit back and think, which one of these mod loaders people prefer to play with? Now, these days, mod rinth is the source for downloading any mod in Minecraft. And let's maximize this window. If you go to the mods and you see that, yeah, we have another mod loader called Quilt, but hey, it's not even as famous as Forge or Neoforge. So Fabric, we will limit the list by Fabric and you'll see that almost for anything that you have in Forge, you have something in Fabric. For for example, if you want to have a technology mod, Create is one of those big game changers that people play with. You see that it has near 500,000 downloads. Applied Energistics, well, it was a Forge mod now ported into the fabric. And yes, you see that Create has more um, additional mods for itself. And yeah, Alloy Forgery and lots of lots of things. If you go for Magic, for example, you see that there are other counterparts of what you have in Forge. Maybe not as big as them, but I I'm telling you, when you go into YouTube and watch the videos in YouTube about gameplay for Minecraft, you are seeing more and more people using fabric. Also, don't forget lithium, sodium, and few other like indium mods out there are dedicated entity calling again for making mods work faster and Minecraft works faster by tweaking stuff there and these are all written for fabric so I would say that if people want to play Minecraft 5.68 million downloads for fabric API is a very good indication on how many people are playing with fabric so choosing fabric means that you are uh, facing at least five to 3 million people out there and this is not a small community by any means. Again, it looks like choosing fabric is the best way to go. So that will be our mod loader for the rest of this series. I will not come back to Forge ever. I may look into Neoforge in future when it becomes stable and if I see that they really got what they say because they are saying that they are changing the core functionality, making it faster, making it better. If I see that it happened, yes, in future, we may have dedicated series for Neoforge. However, right now, we are focusing on one mod loader and I highly suggest that you should focus on a single mod loader because you want to learn everything for modding, at least on that mod loader. When you got professional enough, you can change the gears and switch toward another mod loader. We will talk about porting mods to another mod loader later down the road. So don't worry about that. And I think starting with fabric is much, much easier compared to start with forge. If you like these videos, please subscribe to the channel, hit the like button and turn on that bell so that when I publish a new video, you will get informed. Have fun everyone. Bye.